All right. <clears throat> I want to welcome everyone to our time together this evening. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I believe we're going to have such a blast tonight. And okay. Holy Spirit has some things to say to us Thank as far you. as this subject matter is concerned. I pray that uh, the Lord is strengthening you as a fast. Remember, during this <clears throat> where we draw strength from is from the word and from the place of prayer. That's where we draw yeah. strength. Whenever you're tired, whenever you're weak or feeling hungry, how draw strength is from the word of God. You know, Epistle of John chapter 2, uh, John was writing. He said, I write to you, young men, because you are strong and you have become the wicked one. He said, the reason is because the word of God dwells in you. So when God's word Amen. is telling you, that is where your strength comes from. So if you don't have the word in your system, then you have no strength. And that means you cannot resist the enemy. So during this 21 days fasting, I really encourage you, spend more time in his word. Hallelujah. You know, Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes the Holy Spirit will quicken my spirit, man. Hey, read this. Hey, <clears throat> read this chapter. Read that book there. So consistently feed on God's work. Consistently, uh, you know, delve into God's work. And that's where uh, you and I will draw our strength from. So I want to thank you for joining us, whether you are from here in Atlanta or from another country or out of state. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to pray. And then we're going to delve right into today's uh, 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 topic about praying things uh, out or why, why do we pray in tongues? And that's what we're going to be dealing with tonight. And uh, so thank you for joining us. Now, for you to get the most out of our time together, I would really encourage you to, to concentrate. I know there's a tendency when you are home to get tempted to be multitasking, you have this on and then you're doing other things, you're not going to get the most out of this. I want you to approach it as though you are in the church and you don't want any distraction. I want you to have a, a merry ministry tonight. You know, the Bible says Martha was busy doing everything but the word, but Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. So I want you to sit down tonight, get your pen, get your paper, because it's not just what I'm teaching. It's going to speak to you. You know, I had a meeting with uh, one of our sisters in church today. She was sharing with me about what God spoke to her on Sunday while I was preaching. You know, an area that God showed her in, you know, two areas. And I think that is so critical that when we avail mm -hmm. ourselves, the Holy Spirit is speaking to us, showing us area in our lives, what we need to do. So, so write it down. What is he asking you to do? You know, take notes, write it down, uh, those things that he's saying to you. So take notes, get your pen and your paper. And by the way, if you have friends, it's not too late. I mean, you can get up, send them the link, and then come right back and join us. I mean, today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about why do we need to pray in tongues? You know, why? Is there any need for that? I mean... Uh, and so today, uh, and uh, for some of you, this is going to be a reminder. You know, Peter says something. He said, while I am in this tabernacle, I have to keep reminding you of the word. Because sometimes we forget things. So for some of you, it's going to be a reminder. For others, it's going to be a brand new information or revelation that you've never heard before. But wherever you are, all of us are uh, bound to benefit immensely from this so if you know anybody out of state or locally or your friends or somebody within your circle of influence will you just send them the link and say join us now because we are that we are talking about why do we pray in the holy spirit why pray in tongues what do we derive from it you know? what 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 are the outcome of praying in the holy spirit so it's not too late for you to communicate this to uh, your loved ones, people in your life and things like that. And take note, so later on, you could go back again and go over this, uh, 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 what we're talking about. You go over it again, you know? 
I, I remember when I first gave my life to Jesus Christ as a youngster, I never played with my notebook, my pen. I wrote down scripture. I wrote down <laughs> statement. And when you write things down, it's like you are commi committing it to memory twice. You know, you get it twice when you write it down. That's why in, in the university, if they'll ask you to do, uh, you know, you know, a paper work, you know, write out, you know, they do a book review, is to see how you got it. And I discovered one of the ways that learning is crystallized is if you can write it down. You know, if, you can, if the scripture said, write the vision down. So I want to encourage you tonight, you have, if you don't have a pen or a paper, it's not too late for you to get one. I believe we're going to have an exciting time tonight. I am so excited uh, that you could join us today. You've left everything. I know there's such a hunger in your heart, hunger for his word, hunger for his presence. And the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled. You will be filled to the degree of your thirst or hunger. If you're hungry, God's going to fill you up. He's going to satisfy you tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Let's just open up our mouth tonight and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, Glory we love you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Praise you. Praise you. Lord. What a mighty God. You, God. We come what a awesome God. Father. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels, Father. And how much we appreciate you, Father. God. Hallelujah. You are so wonderful. Father, we love you. The more I have a relationship with the maker of the universe. I am in relationship. He is my father. I am his father. What a blessing. What a blessing that the king of the universe, the one who created everything, has come down to our level and agreed to have relationship with us and be our friend. Thank you so much. We love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We magnify you today. You took us out. You brought us back safely. You protected us. You preserved our lives. We rejoice. We celebrate you today. You are the one that keeps us. You are the one that protects us. You are our shield and our bond. We love you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you and we celebrate you tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to invite the ministry of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. You know, we can't do anything without him. We need his ministry. Mm -hmm. We need his, uh, his presence tonight. Let's mm -hmm. just pray and invite the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, come, mm -hmm. come in our midst tonight. Teach us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Holy Spirit, open up my eyes. Yeah. Give us understanding. Give me insight. Mm -hmm. Take away the veil. Take away every darkness. Mm -hmm. Let the light of your word yes. break mm -hmm. out in my spirit, man, tonight. Bring me mm -hmm. to another level of revelation mm -hmm. and yes. understanding, even tonight. Let's mm -hmm. pray tonight. Just invite the Holy Spirit. Holy spirit oh, we welcome you tonight. God. We welcome Hallelujah. you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the way you come, you will teach us. Tonight. You will Hallelujah. receive from the Father, and you will show it to us. Tonight, we pray that you reveal the truth of God's word. What the Father is saying to us, that you receive from the Father and that you show it to us. Lord, minister to us. Lord, speak to us. Lord, help us tonight. Let every blindness be taken us. Let the veil 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 be taken us. May our understanding be enlightened. May our heart be flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. We love you, Jesus. We praise you and we adore you and we magnify you for the privilege of gathering together tonight, even to fellowship at your feet, even to be able to partake of your word tonight in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, 
you are the teacher. Mm -hmm. Jesus said that when you come, yes. you will guide us into the truth. Yes. You will teach us. You will receive from the yes. Father yes. and you reveal it to us. I pray tonight yes. as we open up the pages of your word tonight. Yes. May our eyes be open. May yes. our hearts be flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit. Yes. In the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for your people tonight, Lord. as many as are with us tonight, Lord. anybody who is sick, while the word of yes. God, the word of life is going forth tonight, Lord. let there be healing for the sick, yes. let Amen. there be deliverance for to our hell captives, Amen. let the yokes be destroyed, burning, lifted up. And the prison door open so that mm, the captive mm. set free by the power of the Holy Ghost mm, in the name mm, of Jesus Christ. Thank mm, you for supernatural mm. miracles and signs and mm. wonders for those who need a miracle. Lord, give them mm, miracles mm. for those who need healing, for those who need direction, for those who need answers. Let mm, there be mm, answers. Let there be solutions for us tonight amen. in the supernatural name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited about our time together tonight. And uh, so we're going to be talking about why pray in tongues. You know, sometimes praying in tongues, some people consider it as old fashioned you know, I don't have to pray in tongues. It is not necessary. And uh, well, I think they say that because they are ignorant. They don't know that they are missing a whole lot, that there's a lot at stake. So tonight, I'm going to share with you, if we have time, we talk about maybe four of them. If not, then we just talk about three of them. What, what do we derive? What are the benefits? You know, Paul says something that I want to point you to is in First Corinthians. Chapter 14, verse number 18. And I'm going to read it. You can make note of that. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. Uh, tonight, most of my text is my translation is going to be New Living Translation, TPT, and then Amplify. He said, Paul said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. So Paul said, Paul was writing to the church in Corinth and he said, guys, I speak in tongues more than all of you. And that is so powerful. So why is it that Paul, uh, Paul was very busy. Of all the apostles, nobody was as busy as Paul was. But as busy as his schedule was, he still made time to speak in tongues, to pray in tongues. Well, there must be a reason why this mighty apostle that shook the then world and that today his influence is still living through us. This Paul that was given so much revelation, apart from Jesus Christ, no other uh, disciple, none of the apostles had as much revelation. Whether it's the revelation on grace, whether it's the revelation on righteousness, whether it's the revelation on name it on, on the, the person of the Holy Spirit. No other disciples, you know, really dealt with this many of these vital areas that we are benefiting from today. Well, I submit to you that he considered praying in tongues as a very vital thing in his life, as a very, very important part of his life, or repertoire to the point that he did that every day. It was a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle. So there must be a reason why. That Paul did that. Well, uh, could this be part of part of the reasons for his effectiveness and success in ministry? Could it be because he took time to pray in tongues, pray in the Holy Spirit? I submit to you that I believe very strongly that praying in tongues was part of making that his repertoire or making that his lifestyle was a major contributing factor to his success in life. So then we should learn from the Apostle Paul. All right, so there are many, many benefits that, uh, you know, happens. So what is praying in tongues or praying in the Holy Spirit? Uh, when we pray in tongues, the Bible says that our human spirit is praying. There is a Holy Spirit, but then there is a human spirit. Your human spirit is the real you. 
So whenever we pray, the Bible says, I think I can read it, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 14. You can make note of that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14 says, For if I pray in tongues, my spirit is praying. So anytime I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, what is happening? My mind is not the one praying. My flesh is not the one praying. It is the recreated human spirit, the real you that is praying. So when we pray in tongues, the, so praying in the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit energizing our human spirit, energizing our spirit in other words we come into partnership with the holy spirit and he helps us to pray he helps us to pray effectively i was talking to a pastor friend today i said i don't know how other pastors do it i will never be able to function without the holy spirit i will be useless i will be weak without the holy spirit mm -hmm. you know i've been pastoring our church for uh, 24 years i have never suffered anything called burnout Never. I have never gone through a burnout. I'm, I'm talking about consistently. I'm talking about preaching day in, day out, conferences. Why? Hallelujah. My partnership with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, so it is so critical. And then Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 18, Paul talks about praying in the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 18. And here is what it says. It says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Pray. He said, pray. He's admonishing the believers. He said, you need to pray in the Holy Spirit. So praying in the Holy Spirit is praying in tongues. It's prayer that is energized and, and, and orchestrated by the pressing of the Holy Spirit. So Paul is writing to you and I that the most effective way to pray is by praying in the Holy Spirit, which is praying in tongues. Hallelujah. Now, there are people who, because they lack understanding and because they lack revelation, they mock praying in the Holy Spirit. And, and then they use all kinds of excuses to say that. Now, let me share something with you because this is Bible study. So I'm breaking things down for us. There are two uh tongues there are two types of the gift of tongues there are two types uh we cannot compare both we cannot confuse both of them uh there are two tongues so i'm going to show you the first one the first one is the gift of tongues the gift of tongue is different from the other one and i'm going to show you right now from uh first corinthians chapter 12 verse number 10 and then we're going to see that speaking in tongues uh, is a gift. This one is a gift, and everybody don't have this one here. It's called the gift of tongues. All right, chapter 12, verse number 10, and then I'm going to jump to verse number, chapter 14, 27 to 28, but let me look at First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10, and here is what it says. It says he gives one, he gives one person the power to perform miracles. That is the gift of working of miracles. And another, the ability to prophesy. That is also a gift of the Holy Spirit. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. That is called the gift of discernment. The gift of discernment is when if somebody is doing something, if something is happening in somebody's life, you are able to discern to say, this is not the Holy Spirit at, at work. This is flesh or this is the devil at work. It's called the gift of discernment. You know, in other words, you can tell what spirit is behind what is happening. For instance, when, when Jesus told Peter he was going to go to the cross, he was to be crucified. And Peter said, that would never happen on my watch. I would never let that happen. Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Well, he wasn't talking to Peter. Jesus had the gift of discernment. He knew that this was not Peter talking. Another spirit had taken over Peter and was trying to block him from going to the cross. 
So mm-hmm. that is so critical. So the gift of tongues. So he said, then he keeps going. On. So he gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another <laughs> spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown tongues or unknown languages. This one is different. Everybody don't have this one here. This one, we call this, uh, uh, this is public edification. When we come together, it's saying you should, when we come together, for, when we come together, and, and, and that's different from when we're all praying together. That's different. But if, if like, you saw what happened on Sunday, on Sunday, I was preaching, that's the gift of tongues and interpretation. On Sunday, you saw me, I, started, I just started praying in tongues. I, but I knew that this was not the regular tongue. I knew that there was a message in this very tongue here. And as I was praying, the Holy Spirit began to give me the interpretation uh, last Sunday. Began to give me the interpretation about it, it, what, what is saying the church, about sacrifice. He was talking to business owners. He was talking to business women. Uh, some of you can remember that last Sunday. So that is the gift of tongues. So in First Corinthians chapter 12, there are these nine gifts are listed there. Uh, there are nine of them. The gift of work, with, they are classified under three headings the vocal gift, the power gift, and the revelational gift, all in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There are nine fruits, but there are also nine gifts. So there are, there's what we call the revelational gift. The revelational gifts are the gift that sees something, which is the gift that sees something the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom the discernment of spirit, those are, we call them, revelational gifts. And then there's what we call the vocal gift. The vocal gift are the gift that says something. That is, uh, th- that's the, uh, the gift of prophecy, tongues, and interpretation. Those are the vocal gifts. And then there's the one we call the power gift. The power gift is the gift that does, the gift that involves doing something. Mm-hmm. That is the working of miracles, the special gift of faith, and uh, and then the gift of healing. Yes. So that's those are what we call power gift. So there is power gift, there is revelational gift, and there is vocal gift. Every one of you tonight, you have at least one or more of these gifts in your life. It's just that you don't even know what they are. That's right. And that's why the our the body of Christ is being robbed. Because it, it imagine this, nobody has all this gift, but only Jesus possesses every one of these gifts here. Some of you have some, but imagine in our church in 2022, and all of us, we've, we've, we've identified the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is in operating in our lives, and we begin to exercise in it. Oh my God, we yeah. come together, those who have the gift of revelational gift. The, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. We come there, they will begin to see things to help people. The power gift. Oh my God, that is what God wants. I'm praying that this very year, we will begin to, we'll find time to teach it. So you identify your own area and then begin Amen. to. Amen. Amen. That will help the church. The church Amen. will be stronger. The church will be so much powerful. Glory to God. Now, even though I'm a pastor, it doesn't mean I have all the gifts. No, I have some, but I don't have all of them. Mm. Not, nobody has all nine of them. You know, so we need one another. So this is what we call the gift of tongues. It's called it's a public tongue. That is the one that Paul say that when we are having Sunday morning service, that you can't be speaking in tongues unless you have the interpretation. It's talking about unless you have this gift in operation in you. In other words, God is concerned about edifying the body, not just mm-hmm. yourself. Now, so that's the gift of tongue. The gift of tongue is different from the second one. The gift of tongue is, is different from the, uh, the second one. In First Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 30, Paul say, not everybody has this particular. Let me read to First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 30. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Verse number 30. Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown tongues? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So he's saying not everybody have the gift of healing. 
not everybody have the gift of tongues. Not everybody have the gift of working of miracles. Not everybody has it. They are, it obviously he gave some. Some have this gift. Some have this gift. But I'm looking forward to it today. When in Overcomers Christian Fellowship. And some of you watching me in the church you go to. Where we found out the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are supposed to be in our life. That way we can help to mature the body. We can strengthen the body. And nobody will come without their needs being met every time. We Hallelujah. Come amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. So that's one. So let me now show you about the second one. The second one is in, in the, the Greek word. It's called glossolalia. Glossolalia is with the possible prayer language. Or another word, we call it the devotional tongue. Now, every believer can pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Now, the first one, everybody can have the gift of tongues. But the second one, everybody can be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Everybody. Paul said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. He said, I wish all of you would pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, it was Paul's prayer and Paul's desire for the church. And so we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to, I think we read it before, uh, verse Chapter 14, verse 18. Uh -huh. He said, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you. So he's saying, you have to remember in the Renton church, there was a lot of abuse of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and Paul is concerned about the body. And so we, it can also happen today. If we, whereby have everybody, just pray everybody. No, they say, look, it's, if somebody has a gift in tongue, let the rest of people wait. And let them finish. So hopefully we'll be able to teach it this very year. It's different from the devotional tongue. Or when we come together. You know, we're all praying. And I'm praying in tongues. This one is for personal edification. The second one is to edify me. Is to build me up when I'm praying. When we come to prayer meeting. Like sometimes we come to prayer meeting on, on Wednesday, on Friday night. Corporate prayer. Or, or, or. Or, or, you know, we are believers with God. It's a believers meeting and we, all, and we are all praying. Well, we can pray in the Holy Spirit individually. But on Sunday morning, you say you can't come there and stand at the pulpit and just start blasting off in tongues if you don't interpret what it is. He said, so many people who are there, who are unbelievers, who are unlearned, who don't understand, who think that something is wrong with you guys. That's mm -hmm. why on Sunday morning, you know, we, we, are, we try to be discreet because we realize that the greatest opportunity people have to know God is on Sunday morning. First time guests are there and we don't want to be engaged in anything that will scare them and terrify them or run mm -hmm. away from them. We have to be very sensitive. So Paul was very concerned about the edification of the body when we come together. But Amen. privately, on your own, God, I want you to pray in the Holy Spirit. So. Now we're going to talk about, so what happens when we pray in the Holy Spirit? And by the way, if you are joining us tonight, maybe you are joining us from another state, and you have not been, you have not been uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with tongues, I'm telling you, you can be filled tonight. I've seen it happen mm -hmm. all the time. I've prayed for people when I was on television, and, and the shifts, I was on television locally here for 10 years, and people told me one time I was praying, and lady got filled with the Holy Spirit and was praying in tongues. So it's not difficult to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, Hallelujah. just take a few steps and you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. And but if you're already filled with the Holy Spirit, you can be refilled during this 21 days. Hallelujah. You know, they, you don't get all there is to getting of the Holy Spirit at one time. It's an ongoing refilling and refilling and refilling. Amen amen. 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 So what happens when we pray in the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. What happens? What happens now? If you have any comment, please go ahead and post it here, and uh, and, and it is blessing you. So let's look at now in First Corinthians chapter fourteen. We're going to look at it now from the Kim James, a uh, New Kim James version, New Kim James version, First Corinthians chapter fourteen, and I'm going to read from verse number two to five, First Corinthians chapter fourteen from two to five. It says, "For he for he who speaks in a tongue." does not speak to men, 
but to God. So don't forget that. So when I'm praying in tongues, who am I talking to? I'm talking to God. To God. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Because the scripture tells us that he that speaks in an unknown tongue is not speaking to man, but he's speaking to who? But he's speaking to God. God. Mm -hmm. He said, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, in the spirit, he mm -hmm. speaks mysteries. Oh, my God. In other words, he said that when you are praying in the Holy Spirit, you are speaking what? Mysteries. Mysteries. Mystery. Yes. Now, the mystery to the devil is a mystery to man. It could be a mystery to you, but guess what? It's not a mystery to the person you're talking to. Hallelujah. It's not a mystery to God. It's a mystery to the devil. The devil has no clue what, what in the world is going on here. Hallelujah. <laughs> and guess what? Because he doesn't know what you are talking about, he can't stop it. He can't. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. You are consulting business with God. You know, there is what is called presidential hotline. When mm. the president of the United States is talking to another president of another country, they use what is called hotline. In other words, nobody can, can access oh, what yeah. their conversation. Nobody can tap into their conversation. They're using a hotline. Yeah. Well, as a child of God, we speaking in tongues is a hotline between us Hallelujah. and God. Yeah, glory be to God. Praise God. Now, when I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, Lebo Robo Zubrege Vesita Kupalika Dabadula, Jo Baby Gazila. Hey, I don't yeah. know what I'm praying. The people don't know what I'm praying. The devil doesn't know what I'm praying. But God knows exactly what I'm praying. Because yes, the Holy hallelujah. Spirit is taking what I'm saying. And it goes to the Father. And he said to the Father, this is what Benny Momo is saying. This is what uh -huh. Sister Natalina is saying. This is what Grace is saying. This is what Natalia is saying. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit knows exactly what you're saying. And he takes it to the Father. And it, he tells the exactly what you are what you are praying for hallelujah glory to god hallelujah so let me go father uh uh he said for he who speaks uh, verse two for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to god for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men verse mm. four that's where i'm going he who speaks in in a tongue Edifies himself. Mm -hmm. So when you when you prophesy, prophecy is the gift of tongue and interpretation equals prophecy. That's what prophecy mm -hmm. is. Uh -huh. So when I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, oh Paul say that person is edifying himself. Is mm. edifying himself. And Amen. what does it mean to edify? To build up. Yes, Lord. To establish. Hallelujah. A glory to be Um, You remember the word edifice. Edifice. That's where we get the word edifice from. So when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, what am I doing? I'm building myself up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What am I doing? I'm building myself up. I'm building myself up. Glory to God. I'm edifying myself up. See, this is the way life is, child of God. So check, check this out. So when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you build yourself up. When you build yourself up, when the same problem, you don't react the way you used to react anymore because you are no longer where you used to be at. Amen. Amen. See, see you are here before. See, here, here's where the problem was. And so when the problem comes, your wife, your children, life, you react in a certain way. But when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you move up higher. The problem that used to bother you here before, they don't bother you anymore because you are no longer there. You've shifted. You've built yourself. You've gone to another dimension. Hallelujah. This gives you strength to be able to face situation. 
you know, people, people say, oh, the, I was so overwhelmed with the problem. Well, when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, you begin to overwhelm what wants to overwhelm you, hallelujah. You know, like you may say you went through a divorce and your wife left you and your, or your husband left you and that's overwhelming. That's very difficult. But when you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you are building yourself, your inner man. See, you react to life situations based on how strong you are inside. You don't react, you, re you react to the challenges of life, the difficulties of life, based on how you, how you are, your strength on the inside. So when you're praying the Holy Ghost, what are you doing? You're building yourself from within. Thank you, Jesus. You're building yourself from inside out. Oh, you're going to love the next verse I'm going to give to you. Is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse number 20. But this one, I like it in the Amplified Version. Make note of that. Jude. Chapter 1. Jude is the last book before the book of Revelation. It has only one chapter. By the way, Jude is the brother of Jesus. Jude is the brother of Jesus. He was not a Christ follower after the resurrection. That's when he became a Christ follower. Amen. Now look at what it says in the Amplified Version. It says, but you beloved, that means he's writing to the believer. In other words, it's only those who have given their life to Jesus Christ that can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you are not born again, then you can't have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that leads you to God, that leads you to the Father. So let's look at it. Jude chapter 1 verse number 20 in the Amplified Version says, Be you belong. <laughs> Build yourselves up. Glory to God. Founded on your most holy faith. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's another dimension here. That means when I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, what am I doing? I'm building my faith is affected. It's a building up yourself, building up your faith. So when I'm praying in the Holy Spirit in tongues, what am I doing? My faith is being strengthened. My faith is being built up. Hallelujah. I hope you're taking notes. Let's go back there. There's a whole lot more to pull from here. It's a but you beloved, build yourselves up. Founded on your most holy faith. Now look at the, 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 the consequences, the benefits. You see, make progress. That means when I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, I begin to make progress in life. <laughs> make progress. I like this one here. Rise like an edifice. Higher and higher praying in the Holy Spirit. When I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, what happens? I'm rising higher, higher, higher above what? Higher above challenges. Higher above the difficulties of life. What? When I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, what am I doing? When I'm praying in the Holy Spirit, what am I doing? I'm building myself up. And when I build myself up, I rise higher and higher, higher, higher. Let me share something with you. You know, uh, a helicopter, I think I shared this story with us before. Uh, I shared this story with us about that when you pray in the Holy Spirit, what happened uh, that is like a helicopter that is flying above trees, above houses, above stars. Just close the door for now. Lock the door. Lock the door. I'm sorry, guys. My son is picking something up. You know, a helicopter rise above cars, houses, but I also discovered something that helicopter cannot be stopped by red light. When cars stop, helicopter doesn't stop where cars stop. Why? Because it's rising higher above cars. When you and I begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, what stops other people cannot stop you. What blocks other people cannot block you. You become unstoppable, hallelujah. You rise above principalities, above powers, above demonic spirits, praise God. People may try to work something against you, but it will not prosper because you're operating at a different frequency, at a different level in your life, hallelujah. So uh, Jude said that when you pray in tongues, what happens? You rise higher and higher like an edifice. Hallelujah. 
So when you pray in tongues, what happens? You rise up higher and higher and higher. You know, above the decays of this world. There's so much nonsense happening on this side of planet Earth, of this Earth. But when you and I begin to pray, we are not subjected to what other people are subjected to. We are not affected by what is affecting other people because we are operating at a different frequency. We are operating somewhere else where others break down, we break through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Where others say, quit, we keep going because we are energized. So the one reason, one of the reasons why you should pray in the Holy Spirit is that it, it edifies you. It builds you up. You talk about capacity, stamina, strength on the inside to do what God called you to do. You have to be strengthening in your inner man. You remember Paul says, be strengthening in your inner man. He said that Christ may strengthen you in your inner man. But one of the ways to strengthen your inner man. See, there are two parts of you. There is an outer man and there is an inner man. The outer man is your flesh. The inner man is your spirit man, the real you. And so when you pray in the Holy Ghost, what are you doing? You are strengthening the inner man. You are building the inner man to have the capacity to handle difficult situations, to handle life's challenges. So you are a single mother and you got children and you don't know what to do. But when you are strengthened on the inside, you can accomplish things that other people who are married can't even accomplish because it's not according to who, what man or woman you have. It's according to your capacity and spiritual stamina on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. All right. Now I've got more to share with you. So what happens? Uh, what are the benefits of praying in the Holy Spirit? Number two, he helps us to pray for the unknown. When we pray in the Holy Ghost, when we pray in tongues, we are able to pray for things that we don't know. There is a lot you and I don't know. For instance, you, you, should you take this job? Okay, you, you have two job offers. You have three job offers. How do you know which is the right job for you? How do you know? Okay, you are dating. A man is, is, is interested in you or you are interested in a woman, how do you know if she's the right person for you? How do you know if he's the right person for you? How do you know if you should sign this deal or not, or do this business or not? So when we pray in tongues, praying in tongues, help us to be able to cover for things, cover up areas like that. Helps us. So praying in tongues, help us to pray for the unknown. In Romans chapter 8, verse number 26, and 27, this time I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation, Romans chapter 8, two verses of scripture, verse 26 and 27 in the TPT translation, TPT translation, verse 26. And in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty. In other words, say the Holy Spirit lock hands with us because of our weakness, our frailty. To do what? To empower us in our weakness. For example, at times, we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf. I love pleading to God with emotional sighs to dip for words. I love this one. He said, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf. Thank you, the Tiger. I see you posted here. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You know, he said, but, he said, but God, uh, verse 20, uh, on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs to dip for words. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully your longings. Yet, he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. In other words, the perfect way to pray is praying in the Holy Spirit. When I pray in the Holy Spirit, what is happening? I can pray perfectly because 
He is not going to let me pray a selfish prayer or any prayer that does not line up with the word of God. So here is the question. Have you ever felt a burden to pray? And you don't, but you don't know what to pray. What do I pray? I have. Have you ever felt the urge to pray? But, but you don't, but where do you start? You don't, you don't have the right words. You don't even know what to pray for. So how do you pray? But when you yield yourself to God and you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit at that moment, the Holy Spirit supplies you with the words. He gives you what to say. He helps you to pray for things you don't even know about. How can I pray for my wife effectively? Praying in the Holy Spirit. When my wife is at work or when my wife is at home, or, when I'm, or, my, or your husband is on the road, or your son is at school, and there is, you, there is an alarm in your spirit. Pray, pray, pray. But you're wondering, but what do I pray? I don't know what to pray. But, if you, but praying in tongues helps you to cover areas. I can tell you how many times, as pastor of our church, the Holy Spirit will tell me, pray for this individual right now. Pray for them right now. And I'll begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And I will pray until I feel a release or a peace. Then I know that I've broken through whatever I'm praying for. You know? Or you just break out in thanksgiving or in worship. You just break out in worship and praising and giving God the glory. I've had that happen to me on several occasions. You know, I've experienced that many, many times. Where the Spirit of God will alert my spirit. Pray right now. Yes, sir. And, and let me share something with you. When you start, you start there, then the Holy Spirit takes over. You yield your tongue to him. You start there. Then it takes over. Because I've seen in my prayer time, while I'm praying the Holy Ghost, have you ever found yourself, your, your tongue is shifting? You're, I mean, you are speaking in vocabularies, tongue vocabulary. The Holy Spirit is adding new vocabulary. It's covering areas that you don't know about. I've had that happen to me several times. I was praying in tongues one time and said, this sounds so much like Chinese to me. <laughs> but he, I, I, I don't know what I'm saying, but he knows what I'm saying. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse number 27, I love it. It said, God, the searcher of the heart, the one who is searching your heart knows fully our longings. Yet he also understands the desires of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, we are able to pray in line with God's plan for our lives, in line with God's purposes for our lives, because God has a purpose for your life. God has a plan for your son, for your daughter. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are able to pray in line with what God has already ordained for their lives before you even give birth to them. So many believers are missing out. There is no day that passes by for which I don't pray in the Holy Spirit. Today in the car, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. You know, the moment my, my feet touches the ground in the morning, sometimes I'm watching TV, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. Oh, by the way, by the way, let me tell you another thing. Do you know the gateway to operating in the gifts of the Holy Spirit? It's praying in tongues. Because when you pray in other tongues, it sharpens your spirit man. And you become sensitive to be able to pick like an antenna. You are able to pick from God. You are able to hear. You are able to pick out what he's saying. So speaking in tongues sensitizes your spiritual antenna. Your receptability, praise God. You are able to receive from the realm of the Holy Spirit. You are able to receive that. So praying in tongues sharpens your spirit man. And makes you much more sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. To the, to the nudging of the Holy Spirit. You know. So it sharpens you, you know, by praying in the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, Kenneth Hagin. Uh, 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 no, Kenneth. Uh, uh, what's his name? Ken, uh, uh, Casey Tipprice. Uh, said for over 40 years, he prayed in the Holy Ghost every one hour, every day until he died. One hour, every day. Every day, one hour, praying in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that, that you will be able to get to that state, but you could if you want to. But if you say, you know what, I'm going to do 20 minutes in tongues every day. I'm going to do 15 minutes.
happening is every day. Uh, it may not make any sense to you, but I'm telling you, you are praying for things you don't even know about. You are, you are preventing tragedies. You are preventing calamities. You are reversing things that the enemy is plotting against your family, against your life, against our church. You are reversing things by praying in the Holy Spirit without even knowing. So praying in tongues helps you and I to pray for the unknown. Yes, help you. Thank you for your comment. Helps you to pray for things you don't even know. You know, how do I pray for our church members? Sometimes as a Holy Spirit, I'm cooperating with you right now. Please give me the words to pray to the Father on behalf of every members of our church family. Holy Spirit. And then while I'm praying, while I'm praying, maybe you, you bring somebody to my mind and say, intercede for this individual. Pray for this very individual or pray for their son intercede for them it's it's a wonderful blessing that a lot of believers are are, are, are missing out amen that is, so because of time i need to go to the other one. Oh, i love this one when you pray in the holy spirit you are praying out solutions yes thank you so somebody's raising okay you are praising god i saw so many hands so that's the hands of you're praising god you're giving god the glory am i right so you're on yes i'm sure that's what you're doing when in the Holy Spirit helps you to pray out the wisdom of God. I love this one here. And I'm going to share with you the testimony of how we bought our building. This, I use this very method here. I use this method. When I pray in the Holy Ghost, I'm praying out the wisdom of God for my situation. What is the wisdom of God? The wisdom of God is God's solution for what I'm going through. God's solution for what I'm going through. When I pray in the Holy Spirit, I'm able to pray out God's solution for my health. The doctor said they don't know what to do with me anymore. The doctor said there's no cure for this very illness. But as I bet the Holy Spirit knows the cure, he knows what I can do to turn my health around, to turn my situation around. Oh, well, well, we don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit always knows what to do. There is always something you can do that can turn the situation around. But if you don't know, how will you be able to do that? I, I have a, a very good example of this one. Uh, we invited this man to our church many years ago. His name is Dr. Nasser Sadiqi. Some of you remember that in our old church. He was a national televangelist. We invited him to our church. Uh, he was dying of uh, shingles. God healed him from that. But his wife, had a multiple sclerosis. And the doctor say she can never make it. She will never succeed. She will just be limited to one area. And, uh, and she just began to pray in the Holy Spirit. She began to pray in the Holy Spirit. Every day, every day, every day. See, some people, they pray. When they don't get what they want, they, they cut it off. They stop. No, 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 no. Keep praying. And one day, while she was praying in the Holy Spirit, she began to interpret her own tongue. And she began to say the word, eat more peaches and carrots, carrots and peaches, carrots and peaches. And she said, what's, what's about carrots and peaches? He said, the Holy Spirit said, eat more carrots and peaches. She began to blend it. She began to eat more peaches. She began to eat more carrots. She began to blend it. Juice it, drink it, eat it. Do you know the multiple sclerosis was reversed? She was healed from the multiple sclerosis. Even though the doctor said there is no cure for it, there is no help for it, but while praying in the Holy Ghost, the answer came to her. So when we pray in tongues, we are praying out the wisdom of God. We are praying out God's solution. God's answer for what I'm going through. Let me give you the scripture for that. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from 6 to 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I pray you, this is blessing you as it is blessing me. I am so excited about this, y'all. This is so awesome. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse number 6 through 10. Listen, make note of that. Write it. Re and then research it on your own. Make note. Look at what it says. However, there is a wisdom that we continually speak of when we are among the spiritually mature. It's wisdom 
that didn't originate in this present age. In other words, this wisdom did not come from humanity, did not come from sense knowledge, did not come from going to the university, did not come from the world. This wisdom did not originate from this present age, nor did it come from the rulers of the age who are in the process of being dethroned. In other words, this, this wisdom did not come from man. It did not come from Satan. It said, instead, verse number seven, we continually speak of this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in a mystery. Remember, the Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh in mystery. Mystery is unknown. It's unknown to the devil, sometimes unknown to the people around me, unknown to me, but it's not unknown to God. So when we pray, he says, so he said, this wisdom, instead, we continually speak of the, this wonderful wisdom that comes from God, hidden before now in the mystery. It is his secret plan, destined before the ages to bring us into glory. In other words, God said, there is this wisdom that is unfolded, that comes to us, and is for our glory, is for our promotion, is for our solution, is for answers, is for nagging questions. I don't know what to do. In other words, if I don't know what to do about my son, I'm going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Just because I don't know what to do doesn't mean he doesn't know what to do. He knows exactly what to do. And as I pray in the Holy Ghost, he is able to give me wisdom, answers, solution, what to do to turn my health around, to turn my finances around, to turn my life around. You know, I, I was so glad one of our sisters I met with her today, she was sharing with me about what the Holy Spirit is talking to her. The Holy Spirit is talking to her about her finances. The Holy Spirit is talking to her about areas. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You engage him. You have conversation with him. He is the best counselor in the world. He is the greatest counselor. If you are a student in school, there's no better partner, no better partner than the partner of the Holy Spirit. But let's go, Father. It even gets better. He said, it is a secret plan destined before the ages so bring us into glory he said none of the rulers of this present world or order understood it for if they had if they had they never would have crucified the lord of shining glory this is why the scripture says things never discovered or heard of before things beyond our ability to imagine these are the many things god has in store for all his lovers what am i saying to cut it short when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I'm able to pray out solutions, answers for my health. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, hey, stop eating this thing. Hey, drink more water. Drink more water. He knows what is going on in your system. No, it's not that he's not talking to us. The fact is that we are the one ignoring him. This year, I beg you, do not ignore the pressing of the Holy Spirit. Don't ignore him. Don't don't be too smart for your own good. You are not smarter than the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, he's going to talk to you. Hey, cut this out. You are drinking too much of this, or you don't have enough water in your system, or this thing is not good for you. See, scientists are just playing catch up with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, doctors, science is always discovering what God has already done. That's the role of science, is to discover what God has already done. For you and I on planet Earth, whether it's your business, let me let me share with you what I wrote here. Uh, listen to this: um, the wisdom of God is God's solution for my problem. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are able to pray out the solution needed for your situation. Now, listen to this: as you pray in the Spirit, be, listen, be attentive to what ideas. While I'm praying the Holy Spirit intrusive thoughts are going to come ideas are going to come when i was a young believer when i'm praying in the holy spirit and and i and thoughts will begin to come i said this is the devil sit and i bind you and god said no 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 i'm i'm giving you idea i'm giving you solution for for what is to come you know have you ever while you're praying you'll hear this word call so and so call this person hey, do this do that that's that's the wisdom of god being downloaded in your system call your mom Call your son. Do this. Do that. That is the wisdom of God that, that is coming. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, be attentive to ideas, intuitive thoughts, promptings, promptings, and a knowing of what step to take in order to bring about the desired expectation. You know? In other words, I'm praying in the Holy Spirit 
there will be a prompting in my spirit. Or all of a sudden, there will be a Noah, a knowing in your Noah. You just know. How do you know? I can't explain to you. I just know this. Let me give you a very good example of, of this. You know, I always share this story with our church family. For those of you who are who are joining us from other states, I'm glad you're joining us today. But I'm going to, the story I'm going to share is about our church. We, we have outgrown our old building, and we needed to buy another place. And we went, we saw one building, and the, our members said they don't like that place. There. They don't like the building. They don't like the environment. And, and my wife and I, we, we traveled to Orlando on vacation. That was before we became parents. And, and, and while we were there, I would get up every morning at five o'clock to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. I would get up to Ligo so prayer to Gazita Kipaluku si predicasila. Let the gazo. I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. Day one, praying in the Holy Spirit. Day two, praying in the Holy Spirit. By the third day, while I was praying in the Holy Spirit, there was a picture that flashed in my mind of the building we are in right now. The building we are in right now. And when he showed me the building, it, your, your spirit, the Holy Spirit will be a witness that this is God talking to you. I knew in my Noah that this is it. This is our building. I told my wife, I said, honey, let's go back to Atlanta. I called it real estate agent. Let's go look at the building. We looked at it, brought our church member. They love it. And God, okay. and today we've been there now for seven years and we've almost paid it off. This year we're paying it off. Almost a million dollars paid for within within the under eight years. That's God's doing. That's God's doing. Paid it all off in full this year by the grace of God. So what am I saying to you, child of God? That pr you pray out solution. You pray out answers. You pray out the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is God's answer for my problem. Is God's solution for what I am going through. Amen. 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 Okay. Now, I uh, there's one more I will share with you. And now and then I will pray with you. I discovered this one. Do you know? <laughs> this is so awesome, guys. Do you know that praying in tongues affects your immune system? Yes. Praying in the Holy Ghost strengthens your immune system. There is a scientific study by the University of Pennsylvania and Oral Roberts University. They took a thousand people. Yes, 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 yes. They took a thousand people and asked them to pray in the Holy Spirit. And then they plugged machines to them to read what is going on, what is happening. And here were some of the findings uh, by this guy. He's a brain surgeon. He's a he's a he's a uh, McVick. He's a brain uh, uh, surgeon. Uh, let me read it to you, Dr. Carl Peterson. Uh, he's a medical doctor conducted a study at ORU in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Being a brain specialist, he was doing research on the relationship between the brain and praying or speaking in tongues. He found that as we, as we pray in the spirit or worship in the spirit, our heavenly language, the brain releases two chemical secretions. <laughs> two chemical secretions that are directed into our immune system, giving a 35 to 40% boost to the immune system. <laughs> now, when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, let go so break up that between 35 to 40%, it builds my, it's my immune system, which is even better than any vitamin you can ever. Now, take your vitamin. I'm not knocking down your vitamin, but I'm telling you, that praying in the Holy Spirit builds your immune system even way better than any vitamin in this life here. Oh, glory to God. That there are two chemical secretions, you know, that are directed into our immune system, uh, giving it a boost. This promotes healing within our bodies. Can you imagine that? This pro promotes healing within our body. Amazingly, this secretion is triggered from a part of the brain that has no other apparent activity in humans and is only activated by our spirit-led prayer and worship. Look at that. 
that there is a part of our body that is inactive, that the only way a part of our brain becomes activated is when we pray in the Holy Spirit or when we are worshiping, that that part of our body is activated. There is nothing else you can do to activate this part of your brain only when you pray in the Holy Spirit. Now, the article continues. Uh, it says, uh, glossolalia influences, glossolalia is a Greek word for praying in other tongues. It's a glossolalia influences on stress response among apostolic Pentecostals. The data in this study suggests that glossolalia, which is speaking in tongues, is associated with a reduction in, in stress in response to normal stressors and significantly associated with positive mood. Can you imagine that? That praying in tongues, it, it helps to calm you. It affects your positivity rate. Obviously, the reduction of stress is extremely Okay, it says, are you guys with me tonight? Are you guys with me? Hello, somebody We're say still here. Man, are you listening to me? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Mm -hmm, pastor. Thank you, thank you. I want to make sure yes, you, uh, you guys are here. Yeah. Yeah. Sir, keep preaching. Amen, yeah. amen, <laughs> amen. Oh, oh, thank oh, you for oh, your oh, encouragement. Oh, I appreciate that. But are you guys oh, oh, helping you? Oh, I'm excited, man. Yes, that's fine. Amen. <laughs> That's why we're listening. Amen. Amen. I'm going to email this to Tiger, and we're going to make this study available to anybody. This is a scientific study. Yes. Amen. That's why I need it. I, I need that. Tiger. Tiger. I share it with somebody. It Amen. Everybody, you read it, and it's going to encourage you. It's a glossolalia. Uh, it's associated with a reduction of stress in response to normal stressors and significantly associated with positive mood and calmness. Obviously, the reduction of stress is extremely helpful to one's immune system and entire Powerful. health. Stress damages the body. Peace heals it. So they say one study involved nearly 1,000 clergy members of the British Evangelical Group. The research found that the 80% who practice glossolalia had greater emotional stability and less neuroticism. Mm. This is by a study by L. Francis and M. Robbins, personality and glossolalia, a study among male evangelical. So I'm going to send this to you. It talks about when speaking in tongues, there was a decrease of activity in the frontal lobes and an increased activity in the, in the uh, armors, that is the brain where it is believed by some that we have spiritual experiences language areas are uh, in the look man this is awesome so i'm gonna email it to you you read it that's holy ghost yeah it's holy ghost so much benefits man no, so much benefits i pray today that uh number one we say it edifies you number two what is the second thing we say praying in tongues does for you anybody remember <laughs> Pray out solutions. Pray for the unknown. Yeah, unknown. Yeah, pray, pray for, the, pray unknown. for the, unknown. the unknown. And number right. three, pray out the wisdom of God. And number yeah, four, wisdom, it builds your immune system. Amen. 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 Oh, man, that's powerful. Amen. Super powerful. Yeah. So uh, but, but now, by the way, this every time I come here, it is recorded. The other day I did the teaching here. My wife wanted to listen to the prayer again. Uh, she called Tiger, and Tiger gave her the link, and she wanted to listen. So today's teaching, if you want to listen to the teaching today, or send it to a family member, you can just uh, uh, ask Brother Tiger, send you the link, and then uh, if you're out of state, I know you don't know who Brother Tiger is, uh, I don't know how we can give it to them, but I'm sure you know somebody on our team here. Just tell them, I want the link to the teaching on this Wednesday night, and they will make it available to you free of charge. You can go listen to it. You can share it with other people. But what we want to do, we want to get people praying in the, excuse me, in the Holy Spirit. We want to encourage people to pray even more than ever before. Thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate you guys. I yes, pray that God. today's teaching. Okay, uh, I say it's on, on our YouTube. Okay, thank you, Brother Tiger. It's available on our YouTube. You go to Overcomers YouTube. And today's teaching is that Brother Tiger can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Guys, Ooh, help me yes. appreciate Brother Tiger. Amen. Amen. Help Amen. us get us right. Amen.
Amen. So uh, you can go back and listen to it again. Listen to it again. Listen to the scripture and write it and go through them again. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister uh, Michelle. So how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? It's very, very easy. Now, if there's anybody online with us tonight who has not yet been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you just indicate and then I will pray with you. You know, I can, you know, I will pray with you. Maybe when, uh, uh, if that's your desire and you say, Pastor, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. I don't know anything about who he is. I'll take time to explain to you and then pray with you and get you filled with the Holy Spirit. If you indicate on our chat board, you know, and just say, you know what? I, I, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be able to pray with other tongues. Then we will do that. But if we have somebody, I will do that. If not, then the rest of you, I'm going to pray for you. And then I'm going to let you go and get a wonderful evening because we are back here again at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, yes, mm. it's been an awesome. We are building up Amen. momentum. We're building, we're building, we're building up. I look forward to our time together. I can't wait to meet you again uh, in the morning. So thank you for joining us today. Some of you are from maybe other states or other cities or other country. I don't know, maybe watching us from another part of the world. But thank you so much for joining us today. I want to pray for you. And by the way, uh, it's our Bible study night. So you, you can so see, you know, like, has the word helped you? Has the word built you up? Then I want to challenge you to sow a seed or you want to pay your tithe. I want you to know that your giving helps us to keep doing ministry and to keep teaching like this and helping other people. Your giving helps us to reach more people and to get more people born again. I can't think of a better place to invest in than winning souls and bringing mm -hmm. people into the kingdom of God. And every time we come to Overcomers, every Sunday, we are getting people born again. So this is a good ground. Why? Because people are getting born again. People have been healed. Amen. Amen. Have been strengthened. People have yeah. been built up. Faith has been built up. So your money is always, yeah, thank you. So here are the various ways you can give this on the screen right now. You can use cash app, uh, uh, um, dollar sign, OCF 73732. Uh, you can use your, your yeah. church app. You can text to give, and, so or you can use the church app. And uh, so I'm going to pray for us. Father, I pray tonight that you receive our gift, you accept our tithes and our offerings, and that 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 every need in Overcomers mm -hmm. Christian Fellowship is met. We have more than enough. We have increased tithing and offering. We have 100% tithers in 2022. So we have more money to do outreach, to reach our city, to reach our community, and to change more lives. Thank you, Father. I praise you now Amen. that not only is the need met in your house, but the seed is multiplied back to us so that we yes. have more than enough, so that we are abundantly supplied like never before. Amen. This year, yes, we are God. breaking financial limitations. This yes. very day. Making money Amen. we have never made in all of our lives. Amen. We have more money to take care of our family. We have more Amen. money to promote Jesus. Amen. And the kingdom of God give you glory because there is no struggle in our lives this year. Amen. We are abundantly supplied amen. like never before. Amen. In the name of amen. Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Look, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We love you. Amen. Go ahead now. You can sow your seed right now. And uh, go ahead. Plant the seed. Uh, the water helped you. The water has been a blessing to you. You know, amen. one of this, I have met with a sister today. She amen. said to me, Pastor, amen. God told me that I cannot oh, yeah, do same old, same old. That if I keep giving mm -hmm. the way I was giving before, mm -hmm. then I, my harvest will remain at the same place. That I can't mm -hmm. do same old, same old. That this year, I need to up my game. So, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, that maybe mm -hmm. check your life. What area do you need to up your game? Where do you need to step up? Maybe mm -hmm. you have not been a consistent tither. Maybe you've not been a sacrificial giver. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe in terms of soul winning and bringing people to know Jesus Christ, I want us to do what we have never done. If you do what you've never done, you will have what you have never had. Let's yes. get all the way. Let's sell out to him. If you are not, uh, if you are not sure about tithing, I would say to you, tithe for them. Take 90 days tithing challenge. You tithe for 90 days. 
and see how God moves in your finances. Mm -hmm. you, anybody who we have challenged to do that, when they do that, mm -hmm. they experience miracles in their finances mm -hmm. because when you tithe, you are bringing God into the equation. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mm -hmm. challenge you, for, we, we want to pay off our building this year. Don't talk yourself out of it. You know, yeah. a sister came to the office today and told me yeah. something that blew me away. She said, God told her how much to give this year to us. I nearly fell off of my chair. I said, that's what God told you. She said, yeah. I said, whoa, whoa. I mean, she, is not, she has never done anything like that before. This is the wow. first time. And, and that's how you break limitations of over your finances, over the wow. overcomers is a good ground. You and I know that because people Amen. are feeling safe. We are preaching the word. We are not gaming anybody. We are not deceiving anybody. We just teach the word of God. You know right. that. Amen. 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 The word of God, you know? And so this year we have a lot of, I met with Sister Delithia today. We have a lot of outreach plans for this year. Well, your giving helps us to be able to carry out many of the outreach plans we have this year to bring more people because the best opportunity to get people born again is to get them in the pew in our church. If they Amen. can come into Amen. our building, into our environment that is already prayed out, the worship, the people, the law, all that, makes it easy for people to surrender to Jesus. If you have a loved one who is not born again, if we can get them in those pews, mm. because people go around and touch those pews and lay hands on them, that whoever sits on these pews, they Amen. will encounter Jesus Christ. They will come to know God. So mm -hmm. we are in praying church. We are in praying ministry. And that's who we are. So thank you so much. We love you. If you are watching us from other state, please watch, join us tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. Join us every Sunday morning at 10.30 for our Sunday morning service. But today's teaching, you go to Overcomers YouTube page, and then you can like it and then listen to it and post your comment there as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the word, Pastor. Thank you so Amen. much. Thank Larry, you, do Pastor. we have any announcements you, before we, we close out? Okay, he's not, he's not here. All right. Well, thank you so much. We love awesome. you guys. God awesome. bless you all. Yeah, excited for sure. God we bless appreciate you. you. The Lord go with you. The Lord thank bless you. you. The Lord give you visions and dreams tonight. Prophetic yes, dreams so. tonight. Amen. May he give you answer, direction, solutions. Yes, even so. as you sleep, sleep well. If you've been struggling to sleep, we find every every sleep problem, every abnormal sleep problem. Uh, 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 so receive sleep and receive rest and receive healing for your body in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. Go into the second half before it's 12 midnight, y'all. <laughs>